Ladles and Dice Brooms, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, yes, this is our uh, Indiana Jones from our, our little diorama we've been working on. And uh, in this video, we're going to put the light on his torch. So, let's get on with it. Yes, so this is uh, Dr. Jones. And um, the uh, one of the great things about the design of this diorama... Um, Hex 3D, who designed it, uh, actually had the foresight to add a channel for wiring to actually make his torch light up. Now, what you get supplied with the the diorama is, I hope you better see that, is this. Now, this has been printed out of an opaque um, filament, but uh, it's basically designed to fit on the top of the torch and it actually has if I show you I happen to have a handy one here it's actually hollow inside this has actually still got a bit of support stuck in it so it doesn't fit properly but you can put a five millimeter LED inside it and I thought that's you know that's a good idea but I decided to do something a little bit different um, now I will be showing this a little bit more on TikTok of all places but what I actually made was this so this is a three, uh, sorry, a five millimeter LED flickering orange. Uh, and you can see I've made it look like a flame. Let me get a stick of battery on it quickly and show you how it works. Uh, so if I do that, that looks quite flame-like, doesn't it? Um, now I kind of did this off camera. And the reason I did that off camera is because the stuff that I used to make this, it's called heavy uh, structure gel. Uh, it's from um, the stuff I get is from Windsor and Newton, but it's uh, it's basically like a paste. And when you put it on something, it basically stays where you put it. It's great stuff. Um, and then it dries clear. The trouble is with this stuff is it takes a very very long time to dry, <laughs> um, like about a week to cure fully. And that's why I did this before I started any of the rest of it, because I wanted to get this done so that I could do this bit. Um, but yeah, I'll be putting a little video up on TikTok that shows how to, how I made that. Um, but it is literally just structure gel um, on an LED. So what we need to do now is um, solder this onto the torch. Uh, now, there is not a great deal of room in that torch. I have actually hollowed it out quite extensively using uh wherever it's gone this these are great if you don't have one i would highly recommend it it's basically a miniature rotary tool um that but it's it's great because it's very small it's very light it's not very powerful but it's great for doing little things like this and not having to use you know this <laughs> you've got a lot more control over this than you have this when you're doing uh you know little jobs you know, like hollowing this out. Because obviously the last thing we'll do is blow through the sides of it and ruin it. Um, it's USB powered, so it's rechargeable. But the nice thing is you can actually leave the cable plugged into it and use it all day. So, you know, if it if the battery runs out, just plug a USB cable into it and off you go. So, yes, very handy. I'll, um, I'll put a link in the, in the uh, description for it. Um, so, yes, what we need to do now, I was very careful when I glued this together to make it so that the wire actually could be pulled through. I don't want to pull it backwards and forwards too much because I don't want to risk breaking it because it's still quite a tight fit. Stop laughing at the back. Um, but what we're going to do is first we're going to solder this onto here. Now I do need to cut down the legs of the LED quite significantly. There's a trick here. Um, the uh, the LEDs, the legs, the long one is the positive and the shorter one is the negative. Uh, they do actually have a flat side uh, on, I can't remember which side it's on now, uh, <laughs> but one one side or the other is flat, so you can do it. But what I like to do is just get a bit of a, a red marker like this and just mark the positive side like so, because then that way you know which is which. And then that you can just wipe off afterwards. So we're going to get a pair of clippers and we need to cut these off quite short to fit inside there. Oh. Well, 
like that. So, solder and paste. Uh, some solder would be nice. Solder. Right, so the first thing we need to do is strip these wires. Like that. dry primer flaking off the end of it. Now I would actually like to put a bit of um, a bit of heat shrink on there but I honestly don't think there's going to be enough room for it. So we might have to do without. Um, it's just a question of making sure when it goes in that we don't uh, that the cables don't touch Right, now we'll get an extra pair of hands in here because if you don't have one of these, get one because they're really helpful for this kind of thing. Right, now just pop that in there. Oh, see, what I don't really want to do is I don't want to hold the LED on this gel because I don't know how well it will react, but we might have to. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, now, it's kind of awkward trying to do this with the wires hanging out of Mr. Jones the way they are. But there you go. Dr. Jones, I should say. I keep calling him Mr. Jones. I wonder if you should call him Dr. Jones. All right, I've decided to put a bit of heat shrink on that anyway. I just... Now, let's see if we can maneuver these together. If we can get this one on. Right, that works. So now let's just make sure that, that is actually working. Right, that works. <laughs> right, I'm just having to be very, very careful with this because what I don't want to do is break the wires, the LED, the sculpt or anything else. So I think I've got that just about where it needs to be. So now Pull the wire back through. Pop his, this is another reason why I didn't glue his hand in. So that I could take it off to do that. Pop his hand back in. Right, now let's just test that again. Well, that looks all right there. So now what we'll do is we'll get the base back in. This is where it's going to get awkward. We need to get the base back in and solder it all to the base. Right, so I've just uh, glued Dr. Solo onto the, uh, onto the base of the diorama. And uh, what I'm going to do now is move on to this little drawer that I showed you before. This is for the um, all the electronics to go in. <laughs> I actually I had to drill some holes in this for the switches, and uh, I actually managed to break it in half, which was slightly annoying, but I fixed it, so that's fine. Um, so what I have here 
is a uh, 13300 lithium polymer battery, 3.7 volt. I'm going to turn it around the right way so you can see it. Uh, 360 milliamp hour. Uh, and I also have this charging circuit. Now, this is different to the ones you normally see me use. And that is because this will work better for this application. Now, this charging circuit actually came out of... Uh, well, I'm not going to say what it came out of, because every time I mention the V word, I get demonetized. Because apparently that's promoting harmful practices. Anyway, um, but that's what this came out of. And uh, it also has this little cover, which was chrome, but I've uh, cleaned it up and sprayed it black so that it blends in with the side better. Uh, so basically, this is a great little bit of kit because this is a charging circuit. It has LEDs built into it and everything. Uh, and it fits into this little slot here and clips in like that. And uh, that gives you a fully functional charging circuit in a very, very tiny package. So the reason I've done that is because there was already a hole in this, which I believe was for the switch, for a switch or something. I don't know. Um, so I just made the hole slightly bigger. Stop laughing at the back. And I have made it big enough for this to fit into. Uh, this hole here that is, I've rather crudely butchered out is for our switch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do all of the electronics here because at some point I'm going to have to basically attach this via the wires to the um, to the diorama. And that's going to be awkward. So I'm doing as much as I can now so that I don't have to spend too much time faffing about trying to get that diorama under the camera. So what I need to do is attach the charging circuit and the battery to the switch and then attach the switch to the uh, lights on the, or the light on the diorama and the earth as well obviously so what I'm going to do is I've got a, this is going to be slightly awkward because um, I need to basically pass these wires through this hole and then pop this into place. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to strip those wires first because it'll be easier to do it with the thing out. So, we'll just strip these wires back. Again, these are the same um, silicon wires that I used for the... Uh, for the wiring in Dr. Jones himself. So that needs to go like that. Then we need to put that through there. And if I've done this right, this, oh, let's turn it the other way so the light's at the top. This should just press fit into that hole, he says. There we go. Bit of brute force and ignorance. Yeah, that works. It's one of the nice things about this being plastic is uh, it has a bit of give to it. So there, like that. Wonderful stuff. So now we need to. I wish I'd left that wire a bit longer. Actually, um, I did it short because I didn't want to have loads of wires trailing around, but. It, would have been easier to have made it a bit longer, but still, never mind. Uh, what I really want now is a pair of tweezers. Just a... Give me that aircraft going over. Noisy so and so. Anyway, all right. So, what we need to do is take this wire here. Trim the end off of that as well, and then we'll connect these two together. Oh, we're already getting into the decorating your house through the letterbox situation, and we've barely even started. Now you can see why I'm doing this here and not while it's all on the diorama.
Because the problem is, I have to put the switch in and then attach the wires to it. So what I want to try and do, if I can, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, because I don't know if this is going to be long enough, but I want to try and feed this out through that hole and do it that way. And I don't know if that wire is going to be long enough to let me do that. Uh, that might work. It might work. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to clip this on there just to stop that wire going back through. Okay, so let's put that through there. And I apologise if the framing and everything's a bit off, but as you can see, this is rather fiddly. Soldering paste on there. All right. So now do is I'm going to cut this piece of wire in half so I've got to think of the best right so this wire needs to go to the battery and this wire needs to go from the switch to the light I don't want to get this wrong because I'm really only going to have one chance at this and so now we can put this one. I should take that off there now. It's got the switch to hold it. We can pop that one through there. Like that. Like that. Trim the end of this. Oh. Oh, missed. Pop that inside. Like that. And now hopefully we can pop this switch in. It might crunch a bit when it goes in, but that's it. Make sure that's off. There we go. Now we can turn our attention to the inside. So what we need to do now is connect the positive and negative to the battery. So uh, we also need a negative from the battery to the light. So I'll take this piece of wire here and connect that to this piece here. heat shrink on there. Well, I don't know how I'm going to heat shrink this because I really 
I have to be careful about heat shrinking this inside here because obviously it has um, it's plastic. So uh, now these batteries are quite easy to tell the positive and negative because the positive side has a big line of these going down it and the other side has nothing. So yeah. Hopefully, solder that onto there. Like that. Right, now we need to do, right, that one needs to go out of the way, and we only want the positive on this one, so, right, let's cut that down a little bit. Just as an aside, um, if any of you are 124 scale car modelers, this particular kind of wire makes pretty good um, uh, battery cable. Like scale battery cable. Paste. Oh, this is really awkward to do it in front of the camera because the camera gets in the way. Right. Now, pop that over there. Alright, I'll just heat shrink that. I'll do that off camera because I can't get to the uh, <laughs> can't get to the air gun at the moment. Um, and then what I'll do when I've done that is I'll just use a I'll just stick that down, just so that it doesn't rattle around, and then we can test it all. Right, that's that heat shrink trunk. Now I'm going to stick the battery down. These are um, just sticky pads from the pound shop. Although they tend to stick to my fingers more than anything else, but still, never mind. I'll pop that down there. Like that. battery on there and that stops it from rattling around okay so now we can try this out and make sure it works right multimeter Right, that goes there, turn the battery on, and we have four volts, so that's nice. Now let's just turn the battery off, and we should have nothing, which we do, that's lovely. 
Right, so that works. If I plug this in here, uh, there's that way up. You can see our charging light there. So that'll charge up the battery. So the next thing we want to do is get this and attach it to the diorama. Uh, right, just before I um, finish this off, I just wanted to show you there. So it's been on charge. The battery's now charged up and the light has gone green. So that shows you how the charging system works. So, uh, as I said, now I've got to attach this to the base. And uh, I was going to solder it, but then I thought I'm actually going to use one of these terminal blocks because this way you can actually detach this from the diorama. But more importantly... You can take the wires off and feed them back out of the diorama, the ones that go through the uh, the Dr. Jones figure. So that should hopefully mean that, you know, if worse comes to worse and you need to rewire the thing, you haven't got to cut the wires. So we'll uh, use this. Right, so I decided to do this at the other bench. I thought it would be a bit easier. There's a bit more room. Um, so... Uh, here we have our diorama, uh, and as I said, I've glued the um, other bits on now, so Dr. Jones is firmly affixed. So I'm just going to flip this over. Now, one of the things I've done here uh, is I've added these two strips to the underside, and also, uh, if you can see it, these little rubber feet. And the reason I've done that is because this obviously was sitting flat on the on the you know the table or whatever, and the uh, little box of electronics just sat in this gap. It, there was nothing to call, to retain it, and so what I've done is added those so that at least now when you slide this thing in, if you pick this up to move it, the 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 box comes with it rather than just being a separate piece. So that was the idea behind that. So. Now, we'll just carefully lay this on its side, and unravel these wires a bit. So, what we want to do now, slide that into there a little bit. Oh. That in there. Put that. And oh, come here. Put that one in there. Now, that should, oh, why is that sticking? I don't know if there's a bit of glue on it or something. Pop that in there like that. And like I said now, if you actually pick this up, the, the drawer comes with it. <laughs> so, um, yes, that's it. We can uh, We can wrap this thing up now. And here is our finished article. Uh, this has come out quite well, actually. A, a, a better than I'd hoped, I have to say. Um, as I said, figure painting is really not my, my strong point at all. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this has come out. And, uh, yes, it's, a, it's an interesting subject with uh, Dr. Jones here finding Han Solo frozen in carbonite. It's such a brilliant idea for a diorama. I love it. Um, so yes, hats off to uh, Hex3D for their fantastic design and uh, apparently to um, Bamboo for making really nice 3D printers. Um, so yes, hopefully uh, my patron triple clones will be happy with this. I've now got to figure out how on earth I'm going to box the thing up and post it back to him. But there you go. Um, these things are sent to try us. But uh, yes, hopefully you've all enjoyed this uh, 
this little series. Uh, as ever, I'd like to take a moment and thank my top tier patrons, uh, Howard, Amy and the anonymous Tosh for their continued support, as well as all my other patrons and channel members and all you lovely people at home. So, um, yes, if you want to come and join us on Patreon or channel membership, please do feel free to do so. And uh, if not, that's fine, too. So, uh, yes, hopefully you've all enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.